guys, Aldo here, and thank you so much for clicking on this video about failure. Now, I'm a big fan of failure, as I think it teaches us a great deal. I don't think I'm the first person to tell you this. However, I do think we need to be honest here. Failure sucks, and it is and remains something we do not like to talk about. Now, I know there are loads of literature out there and articles and videos that speak about failure, but frankly, I don't think there's enough of it. And secondly, what is out there is also a tiny, teeny bit hypocritical. Many of the failure stories I hear often are used to segue into selling people's current success. Yes, I am happy to talk about me failing five years ago, but here's my huge success story today. That to me does not say a lot. If you want to be really honest about failure, we need to be able to look at it in its raw, bitter format. No silver lining or no happy ending. Just looking at how we failed and where next time we can do better. A proper post-mortem. So, without further ado, here are my four biggest personal failures that eventually led my business to grow, but only after I fully acknowledged that I made the wrong decisions. Hope you like it, hope you learn from it, and if you do, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can help more people out there. Now, my first mistake was that I only started with good intentions. I started Teach Pitch because I wanted teachers to collectively share the best learning material available on a global scale. Everyone would be happy because they would have the best teaching and learning material available to them for free. So with one click of a share button, an educator from Detroit could easily help appear in Delhi as was written in Forbes back in the day. Beautifully idealistic as that may sound, I did not think of why a teacher would want to share material in the first place. We noticed that many in our community were very interested in searching, saving and using the content made available to them, but less in sharing, rating and reviewing it. This taught me something very essential. When building a technology, always be sure to ask the crucial selfish question on behalf of the user. What is in it for me? Jonathan Nee at The Atlantic speaks further about these good intentions that are specifically characteristic to founders who start a company in the education market. But in order to sustain as an edtech company, it is crucial that you firstly look at what your clients want and what they are willing to pay for. We can only realize our good intentions if we allow our companies to sustain. Don't make the mistake to go in there fully idealistic. That is a failure and one that I made when I started Teach Beach. My second mistake was that I overdid it in the idea phase. I was always determined to become an entrepreneur and to start my own company. And I thought that the golden key to being successful with your company was the idea. So I started theorizing and building on that idea on paper rather than putting it into practice. As a consequence, I fell too much in love with the idea rather than with the actual company, which was a big mistake to make. Now, the truth is there are many ideas out there. Each and every single day, people come up with multi-million dollar ideas, but it is not those ideas that win the day. It's the actual company that puts the idea into reality, that actually executes it, that achieves the victory that you need to become a successful entrepreneur. If you wanna be successful as a founder, if you want to build your own enterprise, then don't overthink it. Don't get into analysis paralysis. Just do it and start today. Mistake number two was that I overdid it in the idea phase. Now, the third mistake I made was that for too long, I thought too linear. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Being a founder, specifically in the early years, isn't easy. You're going to encounter many struggles. You're going to have to do loads of things that you do not like to do to build a company and to make that a success. 
Now, you need to be bold from the start, meaning that your product and your idea is going to help not one, not two, but hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. You need to be there. You need to think exponential. Now, my problem was that in the very beginning of my company, I was surrounded by people who thought linear, who basically were thinking step by step by step not thinking about hundreds of thousands or, or millions of people that you were able to help, but just one, two, or three. And that unfortunately doesn't allow you to scale. Yes, it is needed on some levels, but not on all of them. So if you want to be successful, make sure you allow yourself to think exponentially as well. Linear thinking is good to stay grounded, but not only all the time. My third mistake, therefore, was I thought too long, too linear, leading my company to slow start, not to have an impact on as many people as I would have liked. Try to get it right from the start and think exponential, not linear. So this brings me to my fourth failure which is essentially that I put all my eggs in one basket. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. In the very beginning, when you start a company, specifically as a sole founder like I was, things are not easy. You're not receiving any emails. You don't have loads of colleagues around you. You don't have loads of people who are begging to become your clients. You all need to do it yourself to take your company from zero to one. Now, as much as I respected that, I also felt a little fragile and very open to feedback. And in this period of time, I encountered a group of investors who wanted to become shareholders in my company. The company very much needed some growth capital in order to be successful. So I started to interact with them. We had many meetings. I sent them loads of emails. We had many phone calls and whatever it took to basically let them understand of what Teach Pitch was, I took them on that opportunity. Unfortunately, due to a variety of circumstances, our conversations never went anywhere, yet they took up so much time from me that my company nearly collapsed. This is what taught me never to put my eggs in one basket. If you are determined to grow your company, then make sure you are talking to multiple investors at one period of time. Multiple clients, multiple vendors. Make sure there's a multiple of everything. That is what's going to bring your company to a success. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't take investors or clients individually, not seriously. You definitely should. Just make sure you don't put your eggs in one basket and that all your hope and the entire future of the company is just with one group or one person, because that leaves your company exposed and increases the risk of that it will collapse. So, Failure number four was, I put my eggs in one basket. So these were the four failures that I made that only upon realizing that I had gone down the wrong path, made my company grow, right? So what I did was I needed to fully acknowledge that I was doing things the wrong way in order to change course and change strategy. And that is actually how I think we should approach failure. We should be able to look at failure in isolation. It's only then that we understand what is going wrong and that we can use it to achieve the success that we're actually looking for. I sincerely hope these four failures helped you. And by the way, I'm going to make loads more mistakes. I'm going to fail many times over again. And I cannot wait to share them with you on this YouTube channel. So if you like this video, then please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. It's been a great honor having you as a viewer to this video, having you with me here, and I cannot wait to hear what you think. So don't hesitate to leave your comments below. Thanks so much. Take care.